enter ye in at the what? Straight gate. Enter ye in at the what? Straight gate. The straight gate. For wide is the what? The gate and broad is the what? The way. Now watch this now. The Bible says, the Bible says that wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads somewhere. I want you to read it with me. That leads to destruction. Watch this. The Bible says, and many. And how many? And many there, there be which go in their act. Verse 14, because straight is the gate. And what else? And narrow is the way which leads, narrow and straight leads somewhere. The Bible says that it leads where? To life. Now watch this. And few there be that find it. I'd like to take for a subject on this evening, enter ye in at the straight gate. Enter ye in at the straight gate. When you look at this, this text, what you find is the context is Matthew 5, 6, and then we get to the conclusion in chapter 7. If you've ever studied Matthew, what you have to see is that chapter 5 begins with the Beatitudes. Bible says that Jesus goes into a mountain. I want you to use your imagination because you've got to see what Jesus is doing. Jesus is in a mountain. And he's before a multitude of listeners. Some have already decided to follow him, but many have not. And so he preaches the longest recorded sermon in the Bible. He begins in chapter 5 and he talks about... Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are they that mourn. Then he goes throughout chapter 5 and he talks about turning the other cheek and loving your neighbor. He talks about uh, in chapter 6 not being concerned about the glory of men, but doing things out of a heart for God. He says, go into your closet and pray. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand hand is doing and so when we get to chapter 7 what you have to see is he has already preached a sermon about what the kingdom looks like what does the kingdom of heaven look like he he has told you what the members of the kingdom what they look like now when he gets to chapter 7 he is concluding He's asking the question. He's saying, if you believe what I've said, if the kingdom appeals to you, if you trust that I am who I say that I am, hit right, right. in at the straight gate. Says, if you've been listening to what I've been saying, what I've talked about is not broad in nature. It's not wide in nature. It's narrow. What I'm teaching is straight. Then he said that that is up to you. There are two ways that a man can go. Not a third way. There are but two ways that a man can go. Can't go down the middle path. You have to make a decision. Man has to decide either to be with God or against God. Man has to make a decision. And tonight it is my prayer. It's my earnest and my honest prayer that if you are sitting on the sidelines, haven't made a decision for Jesus, that you'll make a decision tonight. That you'll stop living in the broad way. That you'll enter in, enter in to the straight gate. 
Because that's the only way that a man can be saved tonight. Preach this because we love you. Watch this now. The Bible says that there are only two choices. But when he says that, what you have to see is that Jesus speaks with authority. Jesus, Jesus is, not, is not waffling in what he is saying. He says, heaven and earth will pass away. Everything that I've created will pass away. Sun, the moon, and the stars pass away. But my word, what I'm teaching and what I'm preaching you will stand forever. Man is going to be judged based on what he says. So he pleads with his listeners. And he says, hit the end to the straight gate. Now, what I want you to understand is that when we look, thank you, Mike. <laughs> what I want you to understand is that it's really, it's really just one way. Watch this now. When you think about the broad way, the broad way is where a man is born into, or it's what a man is born into. When you were born, you were born into the broad way. Y'all see that? When you look around you, when you look around you, everything you see is broad. The mindset of those around you is broad. Okay? The Bible says that a man has to do what? He has to enter. Y'all see that? So, so, so it's really not what you see in Robert Frost's poem about two roads being diverged in a wood. It's really just one road that we're traveling. It's a broad road that we're traveling. And that road is leading to destruction. And a man, a man has to make a decision to get off the broad road. And he has to, watch this now, he has to enter into the straight gate. Now watch this. The Bible does not all, only say that he has to enter into the straight gate. It says, few there be. This mic is not working for me. It's all right. Change mics. Change mics. Neither one of them work. All right. It was working good at first. Anyway, in the end, unto the straight gate. That's the first thing. The second thing it says, it says, few there be that find it. Y'all see the picture? In other words, the, the gate by which a man has to enter into the kingdom is not an obvious gate. A man can be traveling down the broad way and walk right past the narrow gate. He can be living his life, doing his thing, confident about raising his family, confident about his profession and competent in his job. He can drive a fancy car. He can live in a big house and he can walk right past, right past that straight gate. Bible says, few there be that Find it. Watch this now. The broad way. Let's talk about the broad way. Get for me Galatians 5 and 19. Amen. See, because in the broad way, in the broad way, everything goes. In the broad way, you don't have to be bashful about, about how you dress. You don't have to worry about how long your skirt is in the broad way. You don't have to worry about, 
about what kind of music that you listen to in the Broadway. Jay-Z and Snoop Dogg, that's okay in the Broadway. You don't have to worry about uh, drinking alcohol or not drinking alcohol in the Broadway. You can get as drunk as a skunk in the Broadway and feel all right about yourself. Man doesn't have to struggle with addiction, with pornography, and, and with sex addictions, and with all of these things in the Broadway. A man can get comfortable in the Broadway. He can do his thing. Not only that, but all philosophies are acceptable in the broad way. If Buddha appeals to you, that's okay in the broad way. If you like, if you like Malcolm X and Martin Luther King and, and you are a social or you are inclined to social activism, that's okay in the broad way. You want to dedicate your life to, to whatever you want to do, it's okay in the broad way. Watch this. A man, a man has to change if he, wants, if he wants to be in the narrow way. What does the Bible say in Galatians 5 and 19? Read. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Now, open your Bibles, because I want you to see. I want you to see the broad way. When you look around you, this is what you see in the broad way. The Bible says that the works of the what? The, the flesh, flesh. Are manifest, which are these. Read. Adultery, you fornication. See, you see adultery in the broad way. Fornication. Read. Fornication. You see fornicators in the broad way. Read. Uncleanness. Uncleanliness. You can be unclean in the broad way. Read. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness in the broad way. Read. Idolatry. Idolatry. You can worship whoever you want to. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Hatred. Hatred. You can be a hater if you want to in the broad way. <laughs> Variants. Variants. Read. Emulations. Emulations. Wrath. Wrath. Strife. Strife. Seditions. Sedition. Heresies. Heresies are in the broad way. Envyings. You can be envious in the broad way. Murderers. You can be a murderer. Drunkenness. Drunkenness. Revelings. Reveling. And such like. He got tired. And he said, anything that looks or smells like any of these things, <laughs> that's the broad way. Read, what does the Bible uh, say? Of which I, I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, in other words what he's saying, what he's saying, that if you are traveling down the broad way, participating in these things, you are not going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Man can make it into the kingdom of heaven traveling in the broad way. Man has to find the what? The straight gate and the narrow way. Because the narrow way and the straight gate, that's the only way that a man will find life. And few there be that find it. So you're in the broad way. You're traveling down the broad way. How do you find? How do you find the straight gate? I'm going to tell you. Bible says, or Jesus says, I am the way. Yeah. I, I am the way, the son of the living God. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Stop by to tell you. You can't come to the Father except by Jesus Christ. That's the first step. A man has to accept Jesus Christ. President Obama's not going to tell you that. Your college professor's not going to tell you that. But Jesus, the one who was in the beginning, he says, he says, I am the way. Watch this now. A man has to abide in his teaching. Second John, turn, turn with me if you will. Second John 1 and 9. I want everybody to turn with me to these scriptures. 
a man can cannot transgress the teachings of Jesus Christ and inherit the kingdom of God. He can't do it. What does the Bible say? Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ Read. hath not God. Read. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he, he said, hath but both if the you Father abide, and the Son. If you abide where? If you abide in the doctrine of Christ. What is doctrine? Doctrine is teaching. Yeah. That's why, that's why the Bible says, go ye therefore yeah. to every nation. Watch what he says next. Follow me, follow me, follow me. Watch what he says next. He says what? Teaching. A man has to be taught first. That's the Great Commission. He told his disciples, go to every nation, teach first, baptize second, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded. So the first thing is this, is that you have to understand that Christ is the way. And number two, you have to abide in his teaching. Romans 6 and 17. Everybody, turn over there if you will. Romans 6 and 17. A man has to obey the right teaching. Man can't, can't, can't go to the mega fest and listen to what T.D. Jakes and Oprah have to say. And, and, and uh, what's, that, what's that girl that's singing over there? Uh, Jennifer Hudson? Jennifer Hudson can't save you apart from what is written. T.D. Jakes can't save you apart from what is written. What does the Bible say? But Verse God, 17. But God be thanked Read. that ye were the servants of sin. You were what? The, the servants, servants of, sin. of sin. So he's talking to those who have been baptized. You were the servants of sin. Of sin. So the question becomes, if they are no longer the servants of sin, what changed? Watch this now. What does the Bible say? But ye have obeyed from the heart. But you, listen to this, you have obeyed. From the heart. From the heart. That form of doctrine. What have you obeyed? Read it in your Bible. What have you obeyed? You the, obeyed what? That form of doctrine. What is that form of doctrine? Which was delivered you. Which was delivered to you. So now... We want to know what is the form of doctrine. Let's look at Romans 6 and 1 while I show you what the form of doctrine is. I just want you to see tonight. If any man tonight has any question about what it takes to enter into the kingdom, I want you to leave here without any questions. Any questions about it. Write down the scriptures. Read along with us. Romans 6 and 1, what does the Bible say? What shall we say then? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Now the question is, since we have the grace of God, since God has saved us by grace, not, not by our works, not because we are good, not because we have done anything, he saved us by grace. So the question which is asked, should we continue in sin? Now he's talking to Christians. What does the Bible say? God forbid. He said, no, nah, you're supposed to have repented. How shall we that are dead to hold sin on, live hold in on, any hold on. You were supposed to have repented. Can't continue in sin? God forbid. How can you? How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer there? How can you who are end? dead, who are dead, that's what happens. Man obeys that form of doctrine. He is dead. Well, I got that wrong. When a, before a man obeys that form of doctrine, he is dead in sin. Scratch what I said at first. Before a man obeys that form of doctrine, he is dead in his sins. Hold on now. It doesn't matter how good you cook. Don't matter. That, that, doesn't matter how, how good you smell. Doesn't matter how, how great a mother you are, if you have not obeyed that form of doctrine, I want you to know tonight that you are in your sins. You are dead in your sins. You are separated from God by your sins. What, 
does the Bible say? Know ye not. Know ye not. That so many of us, as we're baptized into Jesus Christ, read. We're baptized into his death. Read. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. Read. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Watch this. Now you got to see three parts to this scripture. The first part, dead in sins. The last part, you are walking in the newness of life. Y'all see that? Dead in sin and at the end, they're walking in the newness of life. How does a man who is dead in his sin, that's the question that I want you to answer, or I want Paul to answer for you, how can a man be dead in his sin and then walk in the newness of life? What is the form of doctrine? How is that possible? Verse number three, read it again. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ no, were baptized into no, his death. No, no, know this. Know ye not that so many of you who were what? Baptized into Jesus Christ. Who were baptized into Jesus Christ. Now, that form of doctrine that form of doctrine includes baptism. See, you deserved to die. Hmm. That's why the Bible says you are baptized into his death. It should have been you. Christ had no sins. That's right. Amen. Amen. But the grace of God, he took your place in my place. God so loved us, his son thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation, took upon himself. I forget the rest of the scripture. Left my, left my mind. But anyway, you know the script, scripture, Philippians 2, 5 through 15. Took upon himself the form of a man, became a servant, died on the cross. That's paraphrased. It's not a direct quote. But what I want you to see is that, is that that form of doctrine includes baptism. How do we know that? Because Acts 2 and 38. After Peter had preached, the Bible says that their hearts were pricked. Amen. These men understood that he had preached about Jesus Christ being the Son of God. And they believed the gospel. They believe what he had preached. And so they asked the question, what must I do to be saved? Now, if there's anyone out here that wants to know what must you do to be saved, the answer is right here. He says, repent. That's and be was, baptized. That's what he was saying, repent. He said, shall we continue in sin? No. How can you continue in sin? You're dead to sin. Repent, number one, and then what? Be, be baptized. baptized, every one of you. Every one of you in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ for the remission of your sins. Now watch this. I want you to see what happens when you are baptized. A man is added to the body of Christ. All right. Acts 2, 41. What does the Bible say? I want you to turn with me. Then they that gladly received his word. Now, this is the day of Pentecost. They that gladly received his word. Were baptized. They were baptized. Now, after they were baptized, something happened. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. The Bible says that they were added somewhere. When a man obeys that form of doctrine, which after he hears the gospel, he believes it and he is baptized, something happens. Let me tell you something. Brother Barry cannot add you to his church. That's right. Amen. We cannot vote you in to yeah. Christ's church. Yeah. 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 When the gospel call is put out and a man believes from the heart and he believes to the point that he is willing to repent of his sins, confess Christ and be baptized, the Bible says that he is added. 
He is added. 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, what does the Bible say? For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. There we go again. I, 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 I just don't understand. I just don't understand how, how a preacher, how someone who proclaims to be a gospel preacher can preach that a man, all he has to do is accept Jesus into his heart. I don't understand that. We have seen that form of doctrine over and over. And we see it again in 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. For by what? Read it in your for Bible. For by one spirit. For by one spirit. Are we, we all we, baptized. Hold on, hold on. We are prayed into one body. That's not what the Bible says. By one spirit. You are what? You are baptized. Where does a man go after he is baptized? You can't, you can't just worship at the house. Can't forsake the assembly. All right, all right. Why? Because when a man is baptized, he's added to a body of believers. When you are baptized, you have fellowship with God, fellowship with your brothers. You have an obligation one to the other. Got to come to church. Got to be here on Wednesday night. Got to be here on Sunday night. Got to be here at the gospel meeting. Why? Because because you are. Added yeah. right. to the ecclesia, those who are called out, those who, who, who are a part of the body of Christ. Ephesians 2, 15, what does the Bible say? Write these scriptures down in your Bible. Having abolished. Having abolished, read. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, Contained in ordinances. Read. For to make in himself of twain one new man. Read. So maketh peace. Read. And that he might reconcile. Watch this now. The Bible says that he might reconcile. Both unto purpose. God. That's the purpose. You go back up to verse number 11. He talks about how Gentiles. He's talking to the Gentile Christians. How they were far off. They were not accepted. God only had relationship with the Jews. Under the law of Moses. Had to keep the Sabbath day. Had to sacrifice. Had to obey everything that was commanded in the law. And Jew and, and the Gentiles were just left out there. So now he's saying that the Jew over here and the Gentiles over here, the purpose for Christ dying was to reconcile both into one body. That's the mystery of the gospel is that all men, all men, all men would be one, not divided. That's why we can't have denominationalism. First Corinthians teaches us to, to, to teach and to speak the same thing. I can't be over here teaching something and, and, and another church teaching something else. He wanted us to be one. He wanted us to be one, one, one in one body. Amen. Now, why does he want one body? So Christ can have preeminence. Watch this now, Ephesians 1 and 22. I want you to see that this body that we're talking about is the church. The body that we're talking about is the church. It is the church of Christ. The only church that you can read about in your Bible. It's one. Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Men have confused it. Historically, you can look at it. You can, you can date the foundation of denominationalism. What does the Bible say? Ephesians 1 and 22. And has put all things under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness Watch of him now. that filleth all in all. Watch this now. The Bible says, and he put all things under his feet. Under whose feet are all things under? Christ Jesus. And he gave him to be the what? He gave him to be the what? He the gave head. him to be the head. Over all things. Not the tail. 
Now, you don't have any business following Brother Barry if he's not following Christ. That's right. Amen. Amen. You don't have any business following me if I'm not following Christ. That's right. Preach, preach. 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 I'm talking about a pope is the head of the church. This doesn't say that the pope is the head of the church. Can't have the head of the church on earth. Bible says, hath put all, all things under his feet mm -hmm. and gave him to be the head, to over, be all the head over all things to, to the church. The church, which what? Which is his body. What is the body? The body is the church. The church is the body. Colossians 1.18 and he is the head of the body. He is the head of the body. The now, church. Now, now, his purpose was to bring us together into one body. Colossians 1.18, the body, he is the church. Who is the beginning. He's the beginning. The firstborn from the dead. Oh, you got to love him. He's the beginning. See, because it's not just about the church. It's not about me being right and denominationalism being wrong. It's about Christ. If a man can ever see that it's about Christ. See, see, Christ gets the glory out of one body. Christ can't get the glory out of denominationalism. He says me and the Father are one. Holy Spirit, the Godhead is one and his desire is for us to be one. How would the world know us by the way that we treat one another? All right, all right. Purpose of God's, purpose of God coming and dying is that he might reconcile and that he might have preeminence. Romans 28, uh, Romans 8 and 28. Read that on your own. I don't have time, but write that down. Read the rest of the chapter. Romans 8. And 28. Now, I want to show you, as we conclude, that the church is the place of salvation. All right, all right. Acts 2 and 47. We're not just making this stuff up. I, I, I would love to preach something different. I would love to be popular in my job and be the man when, when we have religious discussions. But I'm bound by what is written. Acts 2, 47, what does the Bible say? Praising God. Praising having, God. And having favor and with having all the people. having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church and the daily. Lord, not Brother Barry, not the council of, of brothers. The Lord. Not the elders, but the Lord. Added to the church daily. He added to the church daily. Such watch this, watch this, be watch saved. this, watch this. Read it. Such daily. as should be saved. Such as should be saved. Why do we emphasize the church? Because he adds to the church. He adds to his body. Such as should be be saved. All right. Ephesians 5 and 23. Ephesians 5, 23, and I'm closing. What does the Bible say? Ephesians 5 and 23. For the husband is the head of the wife. For the husband is the head of the wife. Even as Christ. Even as Christ. Is the head of the church. Is the head of his body. Is the head of his church. Is the head of Gentiles and Jews coming together and being one in Christ. He's the head of that fellowship. He's the head of the ecclesia. Watch this now. And he is the and, what? And he is a savior of the body. Now what is the body? He's the savior of 
of the body. Now, we've seen body and church used synonymous over and over again. He is the Savior of his body, which is the church. One last scripture. First Peter 3 and 20. This is where we started on Monday night. Amen. And I just want to wrap it all up for you. I just want you to see from the scripture that I'm not just talking out the side of my head, but this is what is written. What does the Bible say? Which sometime were disobedient. Read. When once the long suffering of God. Now, we talked about the long suffering of God, how it waited in the days of Noah. While, the, while ark, the ark was a preparing. While the ark was preparing. We're in few. Watch this now. We're in few. Now, that's where we started. That's where we started. Because Jesus, from, from the mount, he's preaching. In the end at the straight gate. At the end, he says, few. That How many? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Few there be that find this narrow way. Few there be that find this narrow way. Few there be that find this narrow way. That's Jesus speaking. Now Peter goes all the way back to the days of Noah. And he says, wherein few were saved by water. Whereunto the like figure, that pattern, that example, that carbon copy. That's what baptism saves us. <laughs> the like figure few were saved back in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing his long suffering waited his long suffering is waiting right now and he's going on record and he said, he said few there be that find it in the end the straight gate is there one who will enter ye in the straight gate Jesus is the way. You have to obey that form of doctrine. Baptized for the remission of your sins. Man is added to the body of Christ. The body is his church. When he comes back in the last days, he's coming back for his body the church he is the savior of the body I wouldn't find myself over there at that mega fest I'd find myself where the gospel of Jesus Christ is being preached as it is written God only saves in the narrow way. All you have to do is go back to the days of Noah. God was specific back then. Build me an ark. Pitch it in and without. 300 cubits long. 50 cubits wide. 30 cubits tall. One window, one door. Bible said they were eating and drinking. Marrying and giving marriage when, when the doors of the ark closed. All right, all right. Flood came and destroyed them. Saved in a narrow way back then. Somebody ought to ask me about Daniel. He saved Daniel in the narrow way. Everybody else was worshiping the golden image. Daniel! Why? Why don't you worship the golden image? Because God is a God of the narrow way. King threw him into the lion's den. Lion's mouths were shut. God saves in the narrow way. You've heard the word. Believe it with all of your heart. Believe it with all of your heart. Repent of your sins. Confess Christ to be the son of the living God. Be willing to be buried with him in the watery grave of baptism. 
for the remission of your sins. And he'll give you the gift of the Holy Ghost. He'll add you to the body of believers, the church of Christ, the only one you can read about in your Bible. And that day, Said, I won't destroy the earth by water again, but fire next time. When he comes back, the dead in Christ will meet him in the air. Pointed unto man one time to die and then the judgment. What does the Bible say in Matthew 7 and 21? Read it. This is my last scripture, I promise. Not everyone... That saith unto me. Not everyone that, that saith, saith unto, unto me, me. Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord. Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's not going to be based on saying Lord, Lord. A lot of us can say some Lord, Lord. Read. Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Read. But he that doeth the will of my father. Which but is he heaven. that doeth the will of my father. Man has to do, not just say. Do what I say. Read. Many will say to me in that day. What will they say? Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Did not prophesy. I was at the mega fest prophesying in your name. And in thy name cast out devils. Oh, you should have seen us at the mega fest casting out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. I did works in your name. Read. And then will I profess unto them. You don't want Jesus to say this to you. I never knew you. I never knew you. Depart from me. Depart from me. Ye that work iniquity. You got to obey him based on his work. Come to him right now as together we stand and sing. Will you come? Is there an honest soul tonight? Come to him. Come to him. Amen. Careless soul, why will you lay He's calling you. Wandering from Come to him. the fold of God. Don't be ashamed of him. You not the it's your invitation. Oh, it's your invitation. To meet the God. Let this be the night Careless that you accept Jesus Christ. Come down. Come down. Here's that one. Here's that one that wants to see the smiling face of Jesus Christ in the judgment. Oh, how sad to face the judgment. Don't face it without Christ. Be prepared. To meet the God. Come to oh, Jesus. Careless soul. Don't be a careless soul. Oh, heed, heed his warning. For your life, life will, soon, will be gone. soon be gone. What you gonna do when your life is gone? Oh, how sad. Oh, how sad. He's calling you. To come to him. The come to him. Come to if him. If you unprepared, unprepared to meet the God, oh, careless soul, oh, he the warning for your life will soon be gone. Oh, how sad to face the judgment when you unprepared to meet the God. Let the church say amen again. Uh, certainly, uh, we want to say thank you to Brother Gibbs. Amen. Brother Gibbs preached, preached a simplified sermon to us tonight, didn't he? Uh, and, and